Hi, this video is on how to add Moodle games to your class. Moodle has a number of games that you can use. You can make them count for points. You can make them just extra, you can make them extra credit. You can make them just fun activities for students to do in your class. There's a couple extra steps in making a Moodle game, and I'm going to go through those uh, in this short video today. So first of all, I'm going to turn editing on and I'm just going to put everything I'm doing here in this games one. If I go to add an activity or resource, you will not probably see these games. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different games that are part of a Moodle mod that most teachers don't see, but all you have to do is ask me and I can make it so you can. We just have them off for the default so that uh, it doesn't kind of inundate because you can see there's a lot more activities here probably than you know about just so teachers don't see them all when they first come in. Now, most of these games, not all of them, but almost all of them, use what's called a glossary in order to work. Glossary being a glossary of terms that you have made in your course. In order to get a glossary, you have to add a glossary. So the first thing I have to do is add a glossary. And I'm going to add a glossary called Chapter four terms. Um, I'm on chapter four and that's why I'm adding, adding it. Glossary type, I'm going to call it a main glossary. It asks whether you want it to be global or not. There's some other drop downs here that the defaults are set that they're automatically approved. You can always delete them. You can't have duplicates. <clears throat> Students can't edit them later. You have to be the one that edits them. Uh, oh, there's the no duplicates, uh, no comments. Uh, and automatically linked glossary entries means that, for instance, if a student enters a glossary item of CPU and puts the definition of CPU in my class, now every time CPU comes up in my class, it'll be a link that they can click on and then go to that glossary term uh, in Moodle and see what it is. So the glossary activity can be something that is graded or that you just enter the glossary terms. Um, and you can go through and look at the different settings there, how it appears, simple dictionary st style. I'm going to leave it all with the defaults and hit save and display. And so by default, there's nothing in here. And a student would be able to come in and add new entry and they just put in the concept and the definition. They could enter keywords. They could add pictures that they want to to supplement it as well. I'm just going to be entering the concept and the definition at this time. And you can see that's all that's required. You can see the um, red asterisk, meaning it's required. And these are optional because they don't have it there. So I've got this list of fast, or I've got this spot to put a glossary terms in there. How do I get them in there? I can go over here and I can import glossary in entries right here. And it says file to import. Uh, we need to import an XML file. Oh my gosh, how do I do that? That's really hard. I'm not going to do it the way it says uh, because I can't create that. Instead, I'm going to use, and this link will be in the bottom of your Moodle, uh, I'm going to use this uh, shortcut right here. And what it says is that basically you make a spreadsheet with your, your concepts and definitions. You drop them in here and it will create an XML down here. I'm going to go ahead and delete that so you can see what I'm talking about. So I've got an Excel spreadsheet that has a bunch of terms and a bunch of definitions from this chapter. All you have to do is copy that. So I'm going to highlight that and hit Control C to copy it. I'm going to paste it in here. And then down here, I hit Convert to XML. And it makes this gobbledygook down here that we need to be able to import into Moodle. So now I take this copy all this. I hit control A and then control C to copy it. And I'm going to post it or paste it into a notepad file. So I open up notepad and I paste that in there. And this is what it looks like. And it's kind of a mess. We don't need, we don't really care. I'm going to go and save this file um, onto my computer. So I'm going to hit file, save as, and um, you want to change this where it says text documents to a start out star. We're going to name it um, chapter four terms dot period 
XML because we're creating that XML file and it's saved and I'm going to close. Now I'm going to go back over here to these terms. This is drag and drop that file right there. So I'm going to open up that file I just did. There, you can see it right there on my recent files. I'm going to take, oh, let's see if I can get that back so I can see it. There we go. I'm going to drag that right into this spot. It's going to do it into the current glossary and I'm going to say submit. Uh, and I say continue. And now all those terms that are in this glossary, I can hit all. And we set it up as simple dictionary. So it's in alphabetical order. And those are all the terms that I just reported into my glossary. That's step number one. You have to have a glossary for most of these games. Done. Now I can add. I'm going to add a few. And they were the grades going to be on the back of the up here. They what glossary were you using? Also, like the question is the same. So, the um, I'm going to go ahead and save chapter four terms, the one I just made, and hit save and display. And now it's done. And if they come into it, it says attempt grade, they're going to see all of the terms down here and the crossword puzzle up there that they can go and click in. Oh, I should show you that I could also have said, um, where's the setup? Crossword options right here. Instead of at the bottom, I could say make them on the right. And now if they go into the game, they're beside them. And I think that makes it a little bit easier on most computers. So that's it for a crossword puzzle. If you pick a game of, um, let's say, um, Hangman, same thing, chapter four terms, I hit save and display. I, I'm not setting anything. And then all they do is have, they're playing Hangman, an analog older video out plug used a lot at NTLS. Hmm, let's see, is it DVI? Oops, nope, I just got ahead there. Is it VGA? Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, and you can see how it works there. Congratulations, end of game, and I got a 94%, and you can have this be equal, be bonus points, you can have it be extra credit for a specific assignment, you can just have it an activity that is graded that they've got to go through and play so many times. So that's Hangman. Oops. Oh, I'm supposed to be hitting add a resource. And we'll go and add another activity. Um, the millionaire is a different one. Instead of being, this one either has questions or a quiz. It, I can say I want to use questions from I'm going to use all the chapter four questions. So there's 64 questions that they could get randomly for a millionaire. I can give them a grade. I could say, hey, it's worth 10 points and it's going to go into the fight category. That's my test category. And I can make it work bonus points so that they actually can play a game and get bonus points for their class. Save and display. And if they attempt the thing, you can see it works up there in how much they win. They've got the 50-50, phone a friend, and um, help from other people, and this is how they finish the game and quit. So at the bottom of the motherboard, there's a series of embedded wires that make up the bus. What is carried on the bus? Um, let's see, mm, electrical power, data signals. I don't know, let's, let's go, let's ask some friends. Let's see what they say, 50, or let's see, 48% said C, electrical power, data signals, memory addresses, and data. Boy, I hope they're right. And they were wrong. I went, I went with, that's what you get. I guess it's random. I've never done that before. So I just lost uh, the millionaire game. I'm going to play a new game. Let's see. Primary purpose of the blank is to house the CPU. Let's see. If we do phone a friend, 
I think the correct answer of his motherboard. Let's see if our, my friend was right. Ooh, my friend was right. I am looking at this motherboard. Oh, they got to open up a thing. What is the fastest non-overclocked? Uh, I'm going to go with 5050. Knocked out those two answers. Fastest not uh, looked. At, I'm going to have to look at the question to see if I to keep from getting knocked out uh, right away. Let's see specs. And memory, let's see, the fastest non-overclocked is 2666. And whoo, made it up. So you get the idea. Um, uh, this is terrible. This So I didn't realize that it would give you the wrong answer. I guess probably one of those two is right. Um, I'm going to go with this one and since I know it's not that one. Let's go with this and see. Your answer is wrong. The right answer is do you... Wow, the the ask the audience one is not the one to go with in this game. So you get the idea. That's millionaire. And let's see what other games we can add here. And that one again used either a quiz or a question category right out of your out of your class. Um, Dunhainman, Millionaire, Snakes and Ladders is just the Snakes and Ladders game. So if I play that one, basically the way it works is. You get a board, you roll the dice. If you put in the right answer, you go that far. The newest Intel socket for PCs is an LGA, oops, 1700. Great answers, I'll get to move two. And look, I slid up there, yay. Um, can you lose at Snakes and Ladders? Or you just play forever. So that's Snakes and Ladders. Um, Sudoku is a, I don't play that game. But basically, you answer the questions to get uh, numbers on your Sudoku board. So here's my Sudoku board. The right answer to A1 will put a number in there. So the central processing unit brains of a PC is CPU. And I hit great answer, and then it will put the number in there. So it's Sudoku that you have to get the answers right first before you can start doing Sudoku. Um, and I guess you'd really want to like Sudoku to play that when I'm not a Sudoku person. So we're almost done with the games. Um, hidden picture, you need a picture for. Hangman, I already showed you. Um, I haven't done a Cryptex. Let's see what that looks like. Save and display. Attempt game. Uh, oh, Excellent. Um, my wife actually asked me if there was a um, one where you find a word find. I don't know why they call it cryptics. This is word find. The size of the bus for older CPU systems using four gigabytes or less is, is 32 bit and I see it right there. So how do you answer? Oh, I put it over here. 32 it. Okay, and is it highlighted then? Oh, look right there. Oh, and you can print them out here too and just look for the words. Excellent. I did not know what that was. So not only do you have to find the answers, you can find it where it is on the board as well. Well, those are the ones I use. Again, you have to make a um, glossary. You could make your students do that for you, or you can do the glossary yourself and import it like I just did. And then you can use that glossary or, in the case of Millionaire, um, your question bank to have an activity or game for your students. And that's it for Moodle Games.